are happening digitally. So data transforms the way we work and do business right now because like we see, all of these vendors in Snapcart, they now know what you like, they now know how much stock to put. You could imagine yeah, if they know exactly what the customers want at any given point of time, they would know how much inventory to stock up and how they would promote it to which region because all of this data, it has to be live. One thing that I'd like to emphasize is big data is obsolete unless it is live, accurate, and fast. If it's it, right now in the era of technology, if the data comes in a bit slower, then you'll be behind competition. But if you're alive, then you would know exactly what your customer wants. Another example when it comes to collections of data goes digital. I was speaking in a big data conference in Jakarta two, weeks, uh, two months ago. So what happened was each uh, audience who walk into the conference, they're given a tax, so they have to scan. At any given point of time, a speaker standing here, they would know exactly who the audience are in terms of statistically divided, are you guys um, from corporates, academia, students, or whatnot? At any given point of time, that, the, uh, that data, that statistics keep changing. And accordingly, the speakers would be able to alter um, the way we speak, the way we address the people. So that's how data collections has happened. And um, the other point is, data impacts lives as well. This is the dashboard of One Indonesia. One Indonesia is a non-profit organization in Indonesia, which helps to locate resources properly in order to improve education system. So if you look, this data is produced by uh, MediaTrack, a big data company in Indonesia, a very prominent one. They basically use big data to help us in terms of uh, political campaign, farming, fisheries, and now education through uh, One Indonesia. So if you look at the reddish uh, colors, they are a bit different of shades. That basically tells the ratios of students per school, the ratios of teachers per school, and the ratios of how many students is one teacher teaching. On that basis, we would know the spread. This is the map of Papua, and the one in yellow, the dots over there, that's schools. So on this basis, people would know how many schools they would need to build, how many libraries they would need to build, whether or not there's a shortage of, of, uh, of teachers. Because in the past, without all of this data, people just use their feelings. Huh, I think in that province, they need more books. What kind of books? The books that are read by a three-year-old, a five-year-old, seven-year-old, a 12-year-old, they're all different. So only with data, you would be able to allocate resources properly. I think India and Indonesia are similar. We are both very big countries, and we are spread all over, quite over a vast region, yeah? And if you have to ship a book from one location to another, it might better be a good book. And in Indonesia, what happened is the government has a KPI of opening as many schools as possible because they want to increase the level of education. But now we start to find out that that's not a proper resources allocation. We have to open a primary school in areas where there are a lot of primary school students. We have to open a high school in areas that, where there are a lot of high school students. But how do they do that? They can't without data. They were not able to do that without data. And at that time, uh, there's no such thing as digital ID card. Over here, you have pen card. I'm not sure if the pen card has gone digital. But in Indonesia, what we are trying to do is we are trying to make the ID cards go digital so we know exactly where these people are and what's the census of our people, of our students. And accordingly, we could build the schools. And the KPIs of the government and what's happening on the ground, that's slowly being aligned. And surprising to say, the smart city that has happened in Indonesia, it does not happen in Jakarta, but happened in a very small city called Bojonegoro. I myself, an Indonesian, I never heard of Bojonegoro until I researched on big data analysis. And what that government does is something very controversial. Instead of opening schools, they close 50 schools. Why is that? Because they realize that there's not that many students who need the schools. Might as well allocate the budget into something else. And within three years, th that place, that city has problems with poverty, has problems with flood. They even use big data not only to solve education problems, but also to solve uh, flooding problems and also to solve economic problems. Within three years, ladies and gentlemen, and now that city it's the smartest city in Indonesia that people are trying to replicate. So 
what does it say? It says that basically Drata transforms the way we solve problems. It transforms the way we, do, we look at things, transforms the way we uh, do business, and now it transforms the way we solve problems as well. And data never lies, and that is why this session is very interesting, and I've tagged it as digital is human, human is data, we are data, and data is the foundation of trust. If you torture the data long enough, it will confess to anything you'd like. <laughs> With that, ladies and gentlemen, I shall conclude my sessions. I'll pass it on to Mrs. Finson. Thank you very much. <laughs>